All right, here we go. It's Mr. Attilio here. Today we're going to learn about solving radical equations. So we've been working with uh, square roots, cube roots, fourth roots for a while now, but we really haven't actually solved an equation that involved that. So let's start with Let's just get started with something like this. We have square root of y minus 2 and then minus 1 equals 5. All right, so first of all, you can see that the difference here is this is an equation. We're actually, there's an equal sign right there, and our goal is to figure out what this y value would be, what, what numbers we could plug into there to make this statement, the whole statement, true okay and let's just do go through one then I'll give you some some uh, step by steps after that but what we want to do is the first thing we want to do is we want to isolate the radical part of this problem we want it we want to get this part right here alone so to do that we're simply going to add one to both sides and we will have this all right, now here comes the next step is kind of the big, you know, the big move here for these types of problems. What we want to do is we want to eliminate that square root right here. We want to we want this thing right here to not be there anymore. That way we can solve for y. We're not gonna be able to solve for y if it's trapped inside of this square root. So we need to uh, basically kill that square root, and the opposite of a square root is squared okay so that will by having that square root and that squared though that will cancel both of those out and on the left side we will just be left with y minus 2 but pausing for effect here a little bit we can't just go around squaring things because we feel like it the only way we can solve an equation by squaring is if we go to the right side and do the exact same thing and so 6 times 6 is 36. And now we're left with just, we just have basically a simple equation. And our last step is to simply add 2. So we add 2 to both sides, and we now know that y equals 38. All right, so let's, uh, let's summarize what we just did on that last problem. Um, these are these steps should work for all the problems that looked similar to one we just did. Uh, the first thing we did was to isolate the radical. So if there's any other just numbers or whatever on the same side as that radical, move those to the other side. Then we're going to eliminate the radical, which in the last problem we did that by squaring since it was a square root. But it could be a, if it was a cubed root, we would do a third power, fourth root, fourth power. We're doing whatever the opposite. We're raising to the power of the index. The index, whatever number is right there. That's the power we're going to use to make those two things cancel out. And then finally, well, once you do all that, you'll be down to a to a probably a pretty simple equation that you've learned to solve in the past. Let's, uh, let's change it up a little bit. I don't know if this is going to be any more difficult, but it's going to look a little different. What if we had something like this? So now we have radicals on both sides of the equation. So as far as isolating the radical, that's not really going to happen here. We've, we kind of have. We have it isolated on the left, and we have one isolated on the right. If you think about what we did last time, which was to, to get rid of a square root, we were going to we square it, and then we have to do the same thing to the other side, which would be over here. That seems like that's going to work out pretty good for us if we just do that right now. So whenever you have a radical on one side equal a radical on the other side, and they're the same index, like square root in this case, then let's just do it. Square that, and square that. And you'll be left, remember the square and the square root cancel each other out, 
So you're left with 1 minus 7n equals 10n plus 1. And you're back to a very simple uh, linear equation to solve. So we'll have negative 17n equals, actually come, this one comes out a little weird, we get 0. And then we're just going to divide by negative 17 and we still get 0. And it turns out the answer to that problem is just 0. All right, here's another one. Now this one uh, looks a little different. doesn't look like it has a radical, but we've been, you know, for the last couple of weeks, we've learned that a fractional exponent is a radical. So we can do this a couple of ways. Now the first thing we could do is just, well, we should probably start by isolating, let's isolate the, the fractional exponent by adding 3 to the other side. So we have that. We could immediately convert the 1 3rd power to a radical and then it'll look like the problems we've been doing. Let's go ahead and do it that way. So this is going to be a cubed root of 2y plus 1 equals 3. A 1 3rd power is the same as a cubed root. And now, in order to get rid of a cubed root, we have to take the third power. So we're going to raise this to the third power. If these match, if these match right here, then they will cancel each other out and you'll just be left with, in, with what's inside there. But of course, we can't just go around cubing things unless we do it to the right side as well. And now we are left with 2y plus 1 equals 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And once again, we're back to a basic equation that you've learned how to solve many years ago. So we have 2y equals 26, y equals 13. The answer to this problem is 13. Let's step it up one more notch and maybe even step, you know, change it up on how we're going to solve this problem just to show you a different way. And nothing too crazy. We, we're back to another problem that has a fractional exponent, kind of like the last one had a one-third. This has a three over two. We could convert this to a radical. It would be the square root of r minus nine to the third power. We could do that, but I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to show you what I think might be a little simpler way to do this. In the end, all we really want to do is make this go away. We're trying to solve for r, but it's kind of trapped inside this parenthesis to this power. If we could make that power disappear, that would be similar to making the radical disappear. So, here's the trick raise this whole thing to the reciprocal power. And of course we can't do that unless we raise this to that same power. As long as we do the same power to both sides, then we've done nothing illegal here. Okay. And what was so great about that is we can see right here that these would cross each other out. You'd have, you'd have a either cross cancel them like that or 6 over 6. 6 over 6 is 1 and we're just left with the first power. So we have r minus 9 to the first power but we don't need to write that. And then over here we just have 512 to the 2 thirds power. Alright now we're certainly not done. We gotta solve for r. Remember our goal is to get r by itself. And we could definitely add 9 right now, but we're adding, we'd be adding 9 to this chaos over here, this 512 to the 2 thirds power. So it might be better just to kind of leave this, just to leave this r minus 9 for a second. And let's go ahead, let's go ahead and convert this to a radical. I mean, you could even just type that in your calculator and you'd get a number. There is an answer to this problem. This is all just numbers here. But, 
why don't we try to do it as manually as we can. This is the cubed root of 512 squared. All right, so now we got to deal with this situation right here. I think this problem's probably not as bad as it looks. Let's go ahead and do it slow. Let's go, instead of just typing in a calculator, let me show you how to do this by hand again. We're going to take 512 and we're going to break it into its, its uh, prime factors. So divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So it's actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Multiplying by 2 9 times is 512. This is a cubed root of 512. So for every 3 2's that we have, they will escape as 1. So let's rewrite this thing. We have r minus 9 equals, and then we have 2 times 2 times 2. All those 2's escaped which is 8, by the way, to the power of 2. So let me, let me do some diagramming for it. That power right there is that. And then this 2 is right here. This one's right here. And this one's right here. There is no more radical in this problem. So we have r minus 9 equals 8 squared. That's r minus 9 equals 64 and then finally we're going to add 9 doesn't quite look like a 9 there we go and 64 plus 9 is 73 so the answer to that problem is 73 now I, th I think that should be enough examples I think I put four examples on there for you guys um, that should be definitely be enough to get you started as always with algebra, every every problem's a little different, and you know at some point it all just it all ends up being about one thing. Look for what you're trying to solve for. Like go back to the top of this problem here. You're trying to solve for r, and make everything else get away from that. Whatever you have to do to do that, you know if that means you have to get rid of a radical, if that means you have to multiply by the reciprocal power, you're just attacking this r. Once you understand that idea then it's, not, it's no longer about memorizing how to do a problem. It's just about taking each problem for what it is and, and uh, using a little logic and getting through it. All right, good luck.